Well, welcome well, to Pastors Chat. Yeah, it's great to be Thomas. back again for another week. It's good. I'm excited about today's topic too. This is a yes, something mind. that we do a lot of. We do, we do, and that's preaching. Oh, I had Xbox written. Xbox, oh. Yeah. No, yeah, preaching. <laughs> no, preaching, and it's something that I love doing, something that Tonks loves doing. Yes. And it's a bulk of our job, like a lot of us, particularly your job, like um, preaching yeah. is um, what we're paid to do. And why do we do it though? Do we? Is it part of a job that we don't like, like some people say they don't? Ooh. Let's talk about it. Yeah, all right. So, do you enjoy preaching? I love it. It's great. Yeah, yeah. so do I. There's something about, uh, I don't know what it is, I've just always enjoyed preaching i love the process of making a sermon mm -hmm. sometimes i prefer that process than actually preaching <laughs> it because when you preach and it's done you're just like oh yeah um, in a way but I, I really enjoy preaching um, i love as you said the journey you take studying particular verses mm -hmm. like i love it when particularly you might give me a few ver um the sermon series we're doing and i open it up and i go well i don't know if i'm fully <laughs> sure what that means yeah. just off the top of my head and you have to study yeah. it and um, you grow from it you learn mm -hmm. um there's that famous saying we always say that you preach to yourself before you preach mm -hmm. to others and um, God speaks to you before you get to speak it to others and I find I learn and grow a lot just from that process. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I've always enjoyed that and I love helping other people get to know the Bible. Like that's why I really enjoy, yeah. I'm passionate about the Bible and I love taking that passion out so that other people can understand the It's Bible. a real privilege, isn't mm -hmm. it, to be able to stand up you know, over, a, over a Sunday, mm -hmm. nearly 300 people yep. on average Sunday or these days, how many people are watching us mm. online and you know, sometimes that's a considerable amount of people. So it's a real privilege to be able to take God's word mm. and to be able to really teach it and share it uh, with all those people. And, and mm. it's something people are trusting us to that's do that. It. They're that's trusting it. that we're going to be doing the research, we're going to be doing the prayer, we're going to be doing diligent preparation mm. to get up and share God's word for life change that's and it. to see people going and growing and going deeper into Christ and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, so you obviously enjoy it too, I'd say. Oh, I love it. Yeah. yeah, it's great, isn't it? It's one of my favourite parts of the job, I'd say. Yeah. Out of all the different things we do. I'd agree off. with that. Yeah. I'd agree with that. Yeah. 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 I love preaching to young people too, I should say. They're probably more fun to preach too because you can, I yeah. know, it's a bit more casual in I've some ways. I've appreciated the few yeah. invitations I get to come yeah. along to yeah. some of the refuel nights yeah. and have a lot of fun with the kids. Yeah. They bring your ego down a bit easier sometimes. They're happy to yell out or <laughs> tell you if you're going too long or anything. Yeah. But um, good fun. Yeah, Absolutely. Love it. Can you remember your very first sermon? Very well. How, how, yeah. so how did all that go? I'm a football nut, so I um, <laughs> love footy. So I thought I'm going to do my first yeah. sermon on football. So I remember my first sermon was on football and I used um, different analogies for parts of the mm -hmm. game. Um, anyway, I had a football illustration. I thought, well, I've got to actually show a visual illustration here. It's just what you do for your first sermon if you're a young mm -hmm. preacher kid. So we kicked a foot. I got two of my mates up as volunteers to come <laughs> up and one had to kick the footy and do a display. Now I stressed to him, just do a little kick or a handball. So my mate, his name's Gary, grabs it, dodges a tackle, and then boots it into the congregation. It was <laughs> yeah, I like, remember that. Yeah. And I'm just like, what are you doing? And it lands on this elderly lady at our church whose name was Gwen. And it was her first service back after about four months of yeah. being in hospital or something. And it lands in her lap, <laughs> sitting in a wheelchair. And I was just like, I've killed a member of the congregation. Yeah, you're never going to preach sermon. again. Yeah. And um, <laughs> fortunately, she was all right, and she laughed it off, and it could have been so much worse even yeah. if it just hit her head and not her lap but um never forgot that <laughs> that's a good one first sermon yeah, yeah my remember yours? first my first sermon i gave i was at yorkshire church christ in ballarat mm. and uh, the youth pastor asked me and one other person to share on a particular topic and and i, I don't mean this in an arrogant way but my my sermon just went off it was like a 10 out of 10 oh, and i had so many people come up to me and just say that was absolutely amazing and People laughed at the jokes and all that kind of stuff. But the problem was it all went to my head mm. and I had to go through a couple of particular experiences to sort of like deflate my head and bring me back down to earth to get rid of that ego side. Mm. Because it's one of the biggest know, dangers of preaching, I think. Oh, yeah. definitely. When, when people tell you how good it was and you know, people just want to encourage you mm. and to you know, inflate the head too mm. much. So then when I went to Bible college, so probably 12 months later, I went off to Bible college. And first sermon I gave at Bible college, I was told 20 minutes and my topic was heaven. So my 20 minute sermon on heaven was about a 35 minute sermon. And uh, it was very, very boring. And the youth pastor there at Wollongong, Larry Galbraith, sat me down and didn't like rip into me, but gave a pretty honest mm. uh, pull down yeah. to, in other words, to say that was pretty ordinary <laughs> and you've got a lot of work to do. 
So I did, I really, really committed myself to try to learn that art of preaching mm. and to, I became a member of Toastmasters, which is a public speaking club and really worked very, very hard at, at that. It's funny, there's two ministry. levels of preaching. There's the public speaking side, which is, you can't, like you could be a really good uh, studier and mm. know the words so well, but you could be a boring public speaker. Oh. So you've got to be engaging yes. public speaker, but you also got to have a good grip of um, mm. the word, like you know how to do a good exegesis. It's a fine balance it is. of both. And I've seen people that yeah um, have awesome content and they mm. put me to sleep. I've seen people that are hilarious. They should be, they should be authors, yeah. those ones. And I've seen people that are hilarious and they keep you on the edge of your seat and then you get to the end of a sermon, you're like, I don't actually know if I learned yeah. anything from them. So I remember when we went to uh, Edge Conference, mm. there was that fella from Western Australia and yep. he had us in stitches. Oh, hilarious. I can't remember what he preached no, about. I can't remember. No idea. Yeah. No, no, can't remember. So why do you think preaching is so important? Because this day and age, mm. you know, so many things have changed, mm. but for 2000 years, people have kind of stood behind a platform, yep. a, a pulpit of some description, and talked to the audience, talked yep. to the congregation about the Bible and about God and stuff. So why do you reckon, even to this stage, that preaching is still so important? I think it's, well, it's just because it's how we need to talk about Jesus. I think it's mm. a great, one of the best ways to gather people. Like it's still probably the most effective way to speak about the gospel is with a large group of people coming to hear it. Like mm. I think at some point, I, I think small groups is another great way to build on it. But as far as coming in and speaking to a crowd, it's always going to be like, it doesn't go away. Yep. Like even you see TED Talks are a huge thing nowadays and it's a yeah, that topic. Huge. That's basically people preaching. It's not about the Bible, I yep. suppose, but um, that platform, I don't know what it is exactly, but it's always mm. been popular. Like it's yeah. always had an effect and it's still so effective to this day. Like we talk mm. about what the next big thing will be to preach the gospel mm. and preaching is still the main yeah. thing like altar calls still happen they look a little bit different at different churches but people still come to jesus through yeah. altar calls yeah. um, and through a, preaching i should say but a few bible passages that really encourage us about preaching so for example i won't read them all but give a bit of an idea so luke 4 18 jesus was anointed to preach the good news mm. so there was a real anointing from god that, that empowering mark 16 15 jesus then commanded us to go and preach so he preached mm. and then just before he ascended to heaven, he commanded his followers to preach the good news. Acts 2.42, he said the example of the early church was this devotion to the apostles' teaching, so to their teaching and preaching. Uh, Romans 1.15, Paul speaks about having an eagerness to preach. So he was looking forward to being able to go to those churches and to preach to them about Jesus. Mm. And that's what I suppose for us. We have an eagerness. We look yep. forward every Sunday being able to share God's word. In 1 Timothy 4.13, the young minister Timothy was encouraged to devote himself to the preaching and the teaching of God's word. So mm. he was being told, you know, devote yourself to that ministry. Mm. And uh, why is preaching so important and, and being very diligent in our preaching? Well, this is always a challenging verse from 2 Timothy chapter 4. It says, In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I'll give you this charge. Preach the word. Mm. Be prepared in season and then out of season. Correct rebuke and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. And then this warning comes in. A time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Mm. Instead, to suit their own desires, they'll gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their, t their itching ears want to hear. Mm. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. Mm. But then, and this was actually part of my calling. This was the verse that was included in my baptism Bible. There you go. But you keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. So really we're commanded in the scriptures mm. to preach, to preach truth, to be diligent in that preparation and diligent in making sure that we are preaching the true gospel of Jesus mm. Christ. It's, it's so important. You had a verse, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, I did. One of my favourite, always, this is one I base every sermon on, I suppose you could say, but it just says in 1 Corinthians mm. uh, chapter 1, verse 25, just says, but we preach Christ crucified, mm. a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. Yeah. And every sermon, I think you always got to preach Christ crucified, like it's based 
on the gospel mm. that Jesus did. And it's always in there somewhere. The preacher yep. can't point to the gospel in their sermon. Yep. Um, it's probably not a good sermon. The difference that Jesus yep. makes. Yep. He is our hope. He is exactly. our answer. And that's like what you said there. Like um, we don't just want to say things that people want to hear. Yeah. When it all comes back to Jesus and him humbling himself, yep. there's going to be hard things to hear from For sure. God's word. I should say quickly, preaching is a bit different to teaching. Yep. So there's teaching. We could just teach you for an hour about a particular mm -hmm. topic, but preaching invokes action. It's a little yeah. bit like how there's being passionate and having compassion for someone. Mm. It's about that action step. So the difference between me being a teacher and a preacher is when I preach something, you should want to go and do something about it. Yeah. Whether that's give your heart to the Lord, hopefully that happens a bit. Yeah. It could be about sin in your life that you want to go and adjust how yeah. you're living. It could be going and telling someone else about Jesus, but there's mm. got to be an action that comes from it. Mm. Otherwise we are just teaching. A practical mm. action point. That's it. What am I going to do with this yep. tomorrow? Mm. How's this going to impact my life? Yeah, mm. it's very, um, it's what separates it, which some people I think just think it's teaching, but there yeah. is a difference. That's... Yeah. Well, here's another Bible verse. I'm interested in how we respond to this one. John 12, 48, now Jesus, this is Jesus speaking. Mm. He says, for I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me to say all that I have spoken. So in our preparation, we'll talk about how we prepare our sermons. Mm. Um, how do we know what God really wants us to say? Mm. It's a tricky one sometimes, mm. isn't it? This is where, and when I'm cutting sermons back, I have to think, was well, this me speaking or is this God mm. speaking? Like I like to, and we get a lot of preparation about what we're speaking on here, like a lot of notice. So you open the Bible, you read it, and you think, okay, what does God want us to tell mm. the congregation? Um, I always pray at the start of every sermon. Mm. I say, let these not be my words, but your words. So yes. we're just God's instrument. But that takes a lot of prayer, mm. reading the Bible, and humility. Mm. It's um, crazy. What do you think on that? That's. Well, I think the wonderful thing is that we mm. are well in advance with our preparation. Mm. Yeah. And so it's really about giving that time almost to marinate mm. the word in our heart and in our mind. Mm. Uh, so again, I start with a lot of prayer mm. and, and the, the prayer is I sit down with a, a blank word document or a, mm. or a blank notepad or something like that. It's like, Lord, what do you want to say? You know, reveal to me. Mm. So a lot of prayer and then sometimes waiting. Mm. You know, I've sat in my office sometimes for an hour or two and I haven't typed a single yeah. word or I've typed a bit, delete, 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 typed yeah. it, delete, 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 just waiting. Mm trusting that what I'm hearing through, you know, not like an audible voice, I mean, that'd be great if God mm. would just dictate the sermon, uh, but just waiting and feeling that inner voice, that inner prompting. Mm. Mm. Um, and it takes a long time for me sometimes to get, like I'll just think about it for weeks before I even start mm. writing the sermon. That's right. I've just got no idea what it's going to be about. Yeah. And like, you know what verse it might yeah. be on, but it's crazy. And I think first mm. it's got to hit and challenge my heart. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. It, it's not, it's not to come from here. Mm. It's got to come from here. Mm. So before I want God's word, again, that practical outcome, before I want it to impact and change other people, mm. it's got to impact and change me first. Mm. I know sometimes I've wanted to preach a very certain point to our congregation. I said, oh, this would be great. And I've got the verse and I thought, <laughs> okay. And it's funny, the heart change that happens and you end up yeah. not getting what you want to be yeah. well, across. And that's that yeah. dying to self that Jesus yeah. talks about. And sometimes I've had a topic and I think, mm. oh, such and such really needs to hear yep. this. And guess who isn't there on Sunday? Such and yeah. such. Yeah. It's so, crazy. Yeah. That's again, why it's, yeah, we've got to humble ourselves, put yep. ourselves second. And that's the signs yep. of a good preacher. Yep. And it's um, a challenge. It's um, There's yeah. certainly a step of faith in all of this. Oh, huge. So I don't think any preacher can ever say they know 100% that this is exactly mm. what God wants to say. Um, you'd probably be a bit arrogant yep. to kind of oh, very much. attempt to say that. Yep. So I think it's a step of faith where we are trusting that in that prayer, in that waiting, mm. in that marinating, uh, in that preparation and study mm. that God has really spoken to us mm. and will speak through mm. us. So particularly as a young preacher, I know growing up preaching, I've always felt very intimidated because we've got people that have been Christians all their life, Ooh, we've got people yeah, in congregations, yeah. even yourself that have been to Bible college, we've got mm -hmm. people that know particular that have been pastors at this church before mm. that sit in our congregation that's right. so you got to really know what you're preaching like you say yeah. it's a step of faith to think well i hope this interpretation's pretty good because some of these people know this better than me so you got to so really take us through it. uh how we prepare so what, what what's your preparation look yeah. like so i get the verse and yep. i read it a few times sit down yep. pray uh, i might go for a walk or something like that 
and just think about it then i won't mm. touch it for a while i might i've got a note section on my phone and on my yep. computer where something might hit me and i quickly write it down mm. happens all the time when i go for a jog or something so i have to <laughs> yeah. quickly pull it that's why i always have my phone in my pocket when i go for a run um i need a I'll waterproof write. pen and yeah. paper so i can do it in the shower <laughs> yeah that's when you get some great thoughts isn't it <laughs> but then i'll just put random thoughts down and then i have a big idea and a purpose just yep. written at the top of every page and i once I know what it's going to be on, I work mm. out that big idea and purpose. Then I might go away again. I might write a bit mm. out. But then from that, I use that as a filter and everything I write um, has to be part of that big idea or purpose. Yeah. Because you could take any passage of scripture and preach seven different sermons on it, maybe right. more. So you got to know, have a very set purpose. Mm. Mm. What about I you? Thought, well, How do you do it? I thought I'd show that as a bit of a, yep. I'm a, I'm a bit old school. I like to... Well, I can't do it at the moment, but I like to get off to a coffee shop mm. with a blank notepad, my Bible, and obviously a couple of pens mm. and nothing else, no commentaries, um, nothing like that. And just, again, read through that scripture, mm. read through that scripture, read through that scripture and just wait on God. And so you can see, if you can see it on the camera, uh, these are a number of my sermons from this year that all just begin with a, a series of uh, notes, there was the cynicism one there, the three to be, yep. all that kind of stuff. And it starts off from that. Mm. And then obviously when I get back into the office yep. or, you know, it might be even a few weeks later, that's when the commentaries come yeah. out and a little bit of the Yeah, I like to go to the commentaries after I've things. thought about it a bit. Mm. Like I'll sit it because I want it to be not William Barclay's message on yeah. Corinthians. I want it to be mine and then, but inspired by God mm. still. Yeah, it's very, um, and I've found... With COVID, I found it a real struggle just doing it at home because I like to go to coffee shops to yeah. do the writing of it. I just yeah, I don't know out what it house. is, but yeah. I, I seem to really like doing yeah, it. So I can do every other job at home pretty much mm -hmm. different, the same as I could do it when I was in my office, but yep. I need to go out to a coffee shop to do my sermons. Well, fingers yeah. crossed, they'll be able to. I hope so. Yeah, I need to be able to write those mm. coffees off on tax. Can you do that if you're a preacher? Probably not. Yeah. But it really is a, a privilege. Yeah to be able to preach. And we want to really thank all of you for, for listening, mm. for encouraging us. Isn't it mm. great when people send an email oh, that's it. or come up to us, not mm. right now, but you know, come up to you at the door yeah. after a service and just, just to sincerely mm. say, thank you so much. Or let you know a few weeks later, you know, that sermon that you gave, mm. this has been the outcome. This is the change that I've instigated yeah. or whatever it might I be. I should have said at the start, that's what I enjoy most about preaching is the yeah. response. And yeah. there's maybe life change, but particularly when someone accepts Jesus for the very yeah. first time. I remember when I spoke at a youth event for the first, one of my first times preaching at a youth event, mm. and this kid came up afterward and said he wanted to be a Christian. And I was like, what? And yeah. I didn't think I was capable of doing that yet yeah. for preaching. Like, you always want it to happen. And um, this young kid became a Christian and um, awesome. went off to school. And I was like, wow, that was yeah. from something that I preached. And mm. it's um, that's the reason, because he understood Christ mm. crucified. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope that gives you a bit of an, in, so. uh, an insight into our, our thinking mm. about preaching, why we preach, how That's we it. preach, all that kind of That's stuff. Um, but now uh, you've got a question of the week. I we haven't do. had one for a long no, time. No, we haven't. But uh, you remember a couple, maybe three, four weeks ago, we talked about reading the Bible. Yep. Very important. And someone said to me later uh, that week after they watched it, they said, well, it's pretty easy for you to read the Bible, though. It's what you do for work. Mm. And I'm like, well, there is an element where, like we've just said, we get to marinate over scripture and read yep. some for work. But I've always been very diligent in the sense, as I think it was my first year at Bible college, but someone made a real point to it, that your faith can't be tied to your job, um, which when you're a pastor, it can, lines can be blurred a little yep. bit between faith and your job. So I always make sure that when I read the Bible, that it's not in my work hours. I do read yep. the Bible during my work hours when I'm doing sermon and stuff, mm. but my daily Bible reading time that we talk about that everyone should do, that's outside of work. I don't mm. put it in my time sheet and say, yep. I read the Bible for the first half hour of work. That's work, mm. it's unfortunately, we don't get paid for that. Well, I should say fortunately, actually. Yeah. Fortunately, that's what you're saying, it's a discipline. I probably use mm. the Bible yep. in some way every single day of the week. Mm. Yeah, whether I'm preparing a Bible study, preparing sermons, uh, just answering someone or in a counselling time. So mm. pretty well, hardly a day goes by where I haven't got an open Bible that I'm reading. But it's like when I was in Bible college, the Bible, and we were warned by this mm. by election, that the Bible can easily become a textbook. Mm. And I've Pretty got to awesome. use it to prepare an essay, I've got to mm. use it to prepare a sermon. Mm. And so it becomes like a textbook, like a, a work journal rather than the living, breathing word of God to, mm. to pastors. Mm. And so again, we've got to really deliberately separate ourselves from work to personal That's promotion. Right. 
That's right. Because if I say if the church closed for some bizarre reason tomorrow, I'd like to think that you and me would both still be Christians for the next yeah, 30, 40, right. the rest of our lives. So yep. It's not tied into what we do. That was yeah. a good question. So Ooh. thanks for asking. Keep sending them in and let us know about preaching. Do you have a favorite preacher? Ooh. What style of preaching do you like? Is there any other yeah. questions you got? Please chuck them in the comments. We'd love to good talk stuff. about preaching. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you another time.